Okay, it is um, more Paradise Lost <laughs> with a cat and dog fight happening right beside me. It's like a veritable, like, I don't know, depiction of biblical violence as rendered in a Renaissance painting or something. Um, like, Judith beheading Holofernes or something, um, or David and Goliath, but but it's really um, Remy tails in your face and um, June barks a lot. Anyway, so a new location because I thought, oh, that would be really comfortable. Do a little reading of Paradise Lost on the couch, and I'm wearing jeans because I went out in public today. So my boss has to go pick up some yard signs for um, the little project that I was telling you mentioned that I mentioned yesterday or the day before gonna go like put up some congratulatory yard signs in my students front yards tomorrow socially distanced of course being safe first and foremost and then um yeah I didn't think I should probably wear my sweatpants to do that turns out I didn't see hide nor hair of anybody or hear a peep from from any of the inhabitants of the house so you know jeans for nothing but here they are. Anyway, it is um, day 40. It's either day 46 or day 48 of the pandemic. And the second time I've worn jeans since the pandemic and continuous learning has started. Um, so that means it's day like either 26 or 28 of continuous learning, like class via Zoom. And that also means it's the 23rd day of April, 23rd day of National Poetry Month, which was um, along with the pandemic um, and the shelter in place order that we got. The reason that I set out to do this in the first place. Um, and here we are. Here we are, still forgetting to turn the, the notifications off on my computer when I video. And um, at the beginning of book 10, book 10, book 11, book 12, and then we are done folks, which means it's not long until April is over. Anyway, we finished book nine last night, um, which is full of moments that are poignant and sad and tragic and all of that. and. It's really not going to get much better from here on out. Nope. More of the same, except less blaming and more realization of what has been lost. If you think back to like moment, the other like big moment of like falling that we have seen or rebellion that we've seen, if you want to call this that, um, Satan we find out much later, flung himself off the side of heaven into like through chaos and night and into um, perdition. And that's where we picked them up at the beginning. And he is like for the rest of the book, wavering between, well, first coming to terms with what he had done and the consequences of it, the fact that he hadn't succeeded, and then coming to terms with what those actions and their consequences mean for his state of being so you've got a lot of his like a lot of self-reflection built in and i don't know why that strikes me as so poignant but it always does there's regret and nostalgia built in and like glimmers of the potential for like real self-recognition that never really turn into true self-recognition um or i guess the recognition that he achieves never aligns with the recognition that we are meant to, the understanding of him that we are meant to have or that milton has um anyway we'll have to see if adam and eve parallel him on that track as well i can promise that we will have more and more self-awareness or more and more reflection and that's what makes book 10 also especially, um, I don't know, especially moving to me. If you know Frankenstein, you might 
keep your ears open for some echoes. We've had a number of them in, in, in our dealings with this epic con up until now, the moment where Eve looks at herself in the pool, for instance, and um, we're going to have another big moment that is a parallel to Paradise Lost. No, a parallel to Frankenstein coming up, I think, in this section of the reading. Um, do we need a, a, a like signal for this is a Frankenstein moment? It's a really moving moment, so I hate to like do something silly. I'm also tempted to like throw in jazz hands or something. Um, maybe June will just bark on unannounced and we'll have like this telepathic moment where she knows that it's time for her to bark, let everybody know that it's Frankenstein. Anyway, okay, this has gotten self-indulgent. So I'm gonna stop now and begin to read Paradise Lost to the lovely rain shower that just started. Um, book 10, we're gonna go from line one to line 353. So less than we have been reading most recently. I hope you can hear the rain, it's really nice. Okay, book 10, The Argument. Man's transgression known, the guardian angels forsake paradise and return up to heaven to approve their vigilance and are approved, God declaring that the entrance of Satan could not be by them prevented. He sends his son to judge the transgressors who descends and gives sentence accordingly. Then in pity clothes, the, clothes them both and reascends. Sin and death sitting till then at the gates of hell by wondrous sympathy, feeling the success of Satan in this new world and the sin by man there committed, resolved to sit no longer confined in hell, but to follow Satan their sire up to the place of man. To make the way easier from hell to this world to and fro, they pave a broad highway or bridge over chaos, according to the track that Satan first made. Then preparing for earth, they meet him proud of his success returning to hell their mutual gratulation. Satan arrives at pandemonium in full assembly, relates with boasting his success against man. Instead of applause is entertained with a general hiss by all his audience, transformed with himself so suddenly into serpents, according to his doom given in paradise. Then deluded with a show of the forbidden tree springing up before them, they greedily reaching to take of the fruit, chew dust and bitter ashes. The proceedings of sin and death God foretells the final victory of, the son, of his son over them and the renewing of all things, but for the present commands his angels to make several alterations in the heavens and elements. Adam, more and more perceiving his fallen condition, heavily bewails, rejects the condolment of Eve. She persists and at length appeases him. Then to evade the curse likely to fall on their offspring, proposes to Adam violent ways which he approves not but conceiving better hope puts, in, puts her in mind of the late promise made them that her seed should be revenged on the serpent and exhorts her with him to seek peace of the offended deity by repentance and supplication. All right, line one through line 353 is where we're headed. So here we go. Meanwhile, the heinous and despiteful act of Satan done in paradise and how he and the serpent had perverted Eve, her husband, she, to taste the fatal fruit was known in heaven. For what can escape the eye of God all seeing or deceive his heart omniscient, who in all things wise and just hindered not Satan to attempt the mind of man with strength entire and free will armed, complete to have discovered and repulsed whatever wiles of foe or seeming friend. For still they knew and ought to have still remembered the high injunction not to taste the fruit, whoever tempted which they not obeying incurred, and what could they less, the penalty and manifold in sin, deserved to fall, up into heaven from paradise in haste, the angelic guards ascended, mute and sad for man, for of his state by this they knew, much wondering how the subtle fiend had stolen entrance unseen. Soon as the unwelcome news from earth arrived at heaven gate, displeased all were who heard. Dim sadness, did not spare that time celestial visages, yet mixed with pity, violated not their bliss. About the new arrived in multitudes, the ethereal people ran to hear and know how all befell. 
they towards the throne supreme accountable made haste to make to make appear with righteous plea their utmost vigilance and easily approved when the most high eternal father from his secret cloud amidst in thunder uttered thus his voice ascend assembled angels and ye powers from unsuccess returned from unsuccessful charge be not dismayed for nor troubled at these tidings from the earth which your sincerest care could not prevent foretold so lately what would come to pass when first this tempter crossed the gulf from hell i told you then he should prevail and speed on his bad errand man should be seduced and flattered out of all believing lies against his maker no decree of mine concurring to necessitate his fall or touch with lightest moment of impulse his free will to her own inclining left in even scale but fallen he is and now what rests but that the mortal sentence pass on his transgression death denounced that day which he presumes already vain and void because not yet inflicted as he feared by some immediate stroke but soon shall find forbearance, no acquaint no acquittance ere day end. Justice shall not return as bounty scorned. But whom send I to judge them? Whom but thee, vice regent son, to thee I have transferred all judgment, whether in heaven or earth or hell. Easy it may be seen that I intend mercy, colleague, with justice, sending thee man's friend, his mediator is designed both ransom and redeemer voluntary and destined man himself to judge man fallen. So spake the father un and unfolding bright toward the right hand, his glory and on and the, so spake the father and unfolding bright toward the right hand, his glory on the sun blazed forth unclouded deity. He full resplendent all his father manifest expressed and thus divinely answered mild. Father eternal, thine is to decree, mine both in heaven and earth to do thy will supreme, that thou and me, thy son beloved, mayst ever rest well pleased. I go to judge on earth thy transgressors, but thou knowest, whoever judged, the worse on he must light. When time shall be, for so I undertook before thee, and not repenting, this obtain of right, that I may mitigate their doom on me derived, yet I shall temper so justice with mercy, as may illustrate most of them fully satisfied, and be appeased. Attendance none shall need, nor train, where none are to behold the judgment, but the judged those two. The third best absent is condemned, convict by flight, and rebel to all law. Conviction to the serpent none belongs. Thus saying, from his radiant seat, he rose of high collateral glory. Him, thrones and powers, princedoms and dominations, ministrants accompanied to heaven gate, from whence Eden and all the coast in prospect lay. Down he descended straight. The speed of God's time counts not, though with swiftest minutes winged. Now was the sun in western cadence low from noon, and gentle airs do at their hour to fan the earth now waked and usher in the evening cool when he from wrath more cool came the mild judge and intercessor both to sentence man the voice of god they heard now walking in the garden by soft winds brought to their ears while day declined they heard and from his presence hid themselves among the thickest trees both man and wife till god approaching thus to adam called aloud where art thou adam Want with joy to meet my coming, seen far off? I miss thee here, not pleased, thus entertained, with solitude, where obvious duty erewhile appeared unsought. Or come I less conspicuous, or what change absents thee, or what chance detains? Come forth. He came, and with him Eve, more loath, though first to offend, discountenanced both, and discomposed. Love was not in their looks, either to God or to each other but apparent guilt and shame and perturbation and despair, anger and obstinacy and hate and guile, whence Adam faltering along thus answered brief. I heard thee in the garden and of thy voice afraid, being naked, hid myself. To whom the gracious judge without revile replied, 
My voice thou oft hast heard and hast not feared, but still rejoiced. How is it now become so dreadful to thee? That thou art naked, who hath told thee? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I gave thee charge thou shouldst not eat? To whom thus Adam sore beset replied, O heaven, in evil strait this day I stand before my judge, either to undergo myself the total crime or to accuse my other self, the partner of my life, whose failing, while her faith to me remains, I should conceal and not expose to blame by my complaint. But strict necessity subdues me, and calamitous constraint, lest on my head both sin and punishment, however insupportable, be all devolved. Though should I hold my peace, yet thou wouldst easily detect what I conceal. This woman whom thou madest to be my help, and gavest me as thy perfect gift, so good, so fit, so acceptable, so divine, that from her hand I could suspect no ill, and what she did, whatever in itself, her doing seemed to justify the deed. She gave me of the tree, and I did eat. To whom the sovereign pres presence thus replied, Was she thy God that her thou didst obey before his voice? Or was she made thy guide superior? or but equal, that to her thou didst resign thy manhood in the place wherein God set thee above her made of thee, and for thee, whose, perfect, whose perfection far excelled hers in all real dignity. Adorned she was indeed, and lovely to attract thy love, not thy subjection, and her gifts were such as under government well seemed, unseemly to bear rule, which was thy part and person, hadst thou known thyself aright. So having said, he thus to Eve, in few, say, woman, what is this which thou hast done? To whom sad Eve, with shame, nigh overwhelmed, confessing soon, yet not before her judge, bold or loquacious, thus abashed, replied, the serpent me beguiled, and I did eat, which when the Lord God heard without delay, to judgment he proceeded on the accused serpent, though brute, unable to transfer the guilt on him who made him instrument of mischief and polluted from the end of his creation, justly than accursed, so vitiated in nature. More to know, concerned not man, since he no further knew nor altered his offense. Yet God at last to Satan, first in sin, his doom applied. Though in mysterious terms judged as then best, and on the serpent thus his curse let fall. Because thou hast done this, thou art accursed above all cattle, each beast of the field. Upon thy belly groveling thou shalt go, and dust shalt eat all the days of thy life. Between thee and the woman I will put enmity, and between thine and her seed. Her seed shall bruise thy head, thou bruise his heel. So spake this oracle. Then verified when Jesus, son of Mary, second Eve, saw Satan fall like lightning down from heaven, prince of the air. Then rising from his grave, spoiled principalities and powers, triumphed in open show, and with extension bright, captivity led captive through the air. The realm itself of Satan, long usurped, whom he shall tread at last under our feet. Even he who now foretold his fatal bruise, and to the woman thus his sentence turned. Thy sorrow I will greatly multiply by thy conception. Children thou shalt bring in sorrow forth, and to thy husband's will thine shall submit. He over thee shall rule. On Adam last thus judgment he pronounced. Because thou hast heard, because thou hast hearkened to the voice of thy wife, and eaten of the tree concerning which I charged thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat thereof, Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Thou in sorrow shalt eat thereof all the days of thy life. Thorns also, also and thistles it shall bring thee forth unbid. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. Till thou return unto the ground. For thou out of the ground wast taken. Know thy birth. For dust thou art and shalt to dust return. So judged he man both judge and savior since, and the instant stroke of death denounced that day removed far off. Then pitying how they stood before him naked to the air that now must suffer change, disdained not to begin thenceforth the form of servant to assume, 
as when he washed his servants' feet. So now as father of his family, he clad their nakedness with skins of beasts or slain, or as the snake with youthful coat repaid, and thought not much to clothe his enemies, nor he, nor he their outward only with the skins of beasts, but inward nakedness, much more opprobrious, with his robe of righteousness, arraying, covered from his father's sight. To them with swift ascent he upreturned, mm, to him with swift ascent he upreturned, into his blissful bosom reassumed, in glory as of old. To him appease all, though all knowing, what had passed with man, recounted, mixing intercession sweet. Meanwhile, ere thus was sinned and judged on earth, within the gates of hell sat sin and death, in counterview within the gates that now stood open wide, belching outrageous flame far into chaos, since the fiend passed through sin opening, who thus now to death began. O son, why sit we here with each other viewing idly, while Satan, our great author, thrives in other worlds, and happier, seat provides for us his offspring dear. It cannot be but that success attends him. If mishap, ere this he had returned with fury driven by his avengers, since no place like this can fit his punishment or their revenge. Methinks I feel new strength within me rise, wings growing, and dominion given me large beyond this deep. Whatever draws me on, or sympathy, or some connatural force powerful at greatest distance to unite with secret amity things of like kind by secretest conveyance. Thou, my shade, inseparable must with me along. For death from sin no power can separate, but lest the difficulty of passing back stay his return perhaps over this gulf impassable, impervious, let us try adventurous work. Yet to thy power and mind, not unagreeable, to found a path over this main from hell to that new world, where Satan now prevails, a monument of merit high to the all to all the infernal host, erasing, mm, easing their passage hence for intercourse or transmigration as their lot shall lead. Nor can I miss the way so strongly drawn by this new felt attraction and instinct, whom thus the meager shadow answered soon. Go whither fate and inclination strong leads thee, I shall not lag behind, nor ere the way thou leading, such ascent I draw of carnage, prey innumerable, and taste the savor of death from all things there that live. Nor shall I go, nor shall I to the work thou enterprisest be wanting, but afford thee equal aid. So saying, with delight, he snuffed the smell of mortal change on earth. As when a flock of ravenous fowl, though many a league remote, against the day of battle to a field where armies lie encamped, come flying, lured with scent of living carcasses designed for death the following day in bloody fight. So scented the grim feature and upturned his nostril wide into the murky air, sagacious of his quarry from so far. Then both from out held gates into the waste wide anarchy of chaos, damp and dark flew diverse. And with power, their power was great, hovering upon the water. What they met solid or slimy as in raging sea, tossed up and down together crowded drove from each side, shoaling toward the mouth of hell. As when two polar winds blowing adverse upon the Cronian sea together drive mountains of ice that stop the imagined way beyond Petsora eastward to the rich Capian coast. The aggregated soil, death with his mace petrific, cold and dry, as with a trid trident smote, and fixed as firm as Delos floating once. The rest his look bound with Gorgonian rigor, not to move and with asphaltic slime. Broad as the gate, deep to the roots of hell, the gathered beach they fasten, and the mole immense wrought on over the foaming deep, high arched, a bridge of length prodigious, joining to the wall immovable of his now fenceless world, forfeit to death, from hence a passage broad, smooth, easy, inoffensive, down to hell. So if great things to small might be compared, Xerxes, the liberty of Greece to yoke from Susa, his Memnonian Mim palace high came to the sea and over Hellespont bridging his way, Europe with Asia joined, and scourged with many a stroke the indignant waves. Now had they brought the work by wondrous art pontifical, a ridge of pendant rock over the vexed abyss, 
following the track of Satan to the self-same place where he first glided from his wing and landed safe from out of chaos to the outside bear of this round world. With pens of adamant and chains they made all fast, too fast they made and durable. And now in little space the confines met of Empyrean heaven and of this world, and on the left hand hell with long reach interposed, three several ways in sight. To each of these three places led, and now their way to earth they had described to paradise first tending. When behold Satan in likeness of an angel bright betwixt the centaur and the scorpion steering his zenith, while the sun in Aries rose, disguised he came, but those his children dear, their parent soon discerned, though in disguise. He, after Eve seduced, unminded, slunk into the wood fast by, and changing shape to observe the sequel, saw his guileful act by Eve, though all unweeding, seconded upon her husband, saw their shame that sought vain covertures. But when he saw descend, the son of God to judge them, terrified he fled, not hoping to escape, but shunned the present, fearing guilty what his wrath might suddenly inflict. That past returned by night, and listening where the hapless pair sat in their sad discourse and various plaint, thence gathered on his, his own doom, which understood not instant, but of future time. With joy and tidings brought, to hell he now returned, and at the brink of chaos, near the foot of this new wondrous pontifice, unhoped met who to meet him quick came, his offspring dear. Great joy was at their meeting, and at sight of that stupendous bridge his joy increased. Long he admiring stood, till sin, his fair enchanting daughter, Thus the silence broke. That was a very stumbling book ten. No epilogue. Hopefully less stumbling tomorrow. All right, until then. <laughs>